I have to uh, write off at the top before I say anything else. Compliment our reader. Oh, such beautiful enunciation. I could hear T's and D's and wonderful job. Thank you. Yeah. The, uh, the Gospel of Mark is in large part a manual teaching how to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And that's what we've heard for the last two or three weeks. Uh, uh, the little one who became, who was someone who be, was an obstacle to a little one two or three weeks ago was who? Peter. Get behind me. You're an obstacle. You're a Satan. That's what the word Satan means, an obstacle. Uh, and last week, the little child, you must welcome a child. So this idea of the little one and the child is really central to this portion of the Gospel of Mark, where he's trying to teach the disciples, those who are his followers, what it means to become disciples. And uh, I'm always encouraged by it because they never get it. Because I never get it. <laughs> it uh, takes a long time to learn. Uh, uh, hence the beautiful psalm that was sung, uh, that your law is perfect and it needs to, it instructs me and I need to learn the way of becoming a disciple. So this little one who is central, who's the little one? Who's the child? It's Jesus Christ. He is the little one of the Father. Uh, he is the child of the kingdom. It's he who emptied himself and took the form of a slave and being humbler yet accepted death and humbler yet that climbing down the ladder and released and let go of all of his dignity and prerogatives to become the least of brothers and sisters. He is the child. So for those who would become disciples, then it means, uh, see, a disciple is not born, it's formed, and it takes years. Someone doesn't uh, read a book and become a disciple. Somebody doesn't do a course and become a disciple. Somebody doesn't do theology or going to one mass. Eh, it takes a long time to learn. Eh? And becoming a disciple means learning to love him, the little one. Period, full stop. Uh, that's why Peter, with all of his failings and his betrayal, he loved the Lord. Uh, becoming a disciple, learning to love. And you see, the axiom is, we become what we love. Uh, so if you love the one who becomes, who is the little one of the Father, then it means with time, slowly, slowly, slow, sometimes painfully slowly, we learn how to become little children ourselves, to become the least. Uh, and that's the magic, the mystery, of what we're called to. And of course, the least, the other dimension of this is a social dimension because it's all about status. The last two or three weeks, and this week as well, is all about status. There is in the human heart, in human community, the inclination to want to say, here's the right people and here's the outsiders. Uh, that's part of all that language about cutting off ears and eyes and hands. In the Aramaic, the Arab uh, tradition, the language, it doesn't always have those middle ground words. So it's light, darkness, heaven, hell, and these sharp contrasts, uh, even to the point where there's no word for cousins. That's why people said of Jesus, Where's, aren't these his brothers and sisters? Because you're either in the clan or you're outside the clan. And it still holds for a good part of the world, that thinking. Huh? When I settled, helped to settle the uh, sisters of the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus in Spryfield, they're from Ethiopia. 
And Sister Anne Marie would see me and she'd come running and say, Father Ron, my little brother. <laughs> and she would hug me. Uh, so there's no word for cousin in their tongue. So the idiom of those extremes, Jesus is making the point, you must, if you're to be a disciple, you must learn the way of becoming the least. You must. It's not an option. Better to cut off an ear than not learn this. Uh, essential. And you know, the only way that someone learns to become a little one, I hate to say it to you, because pride clings so closely, because we're so trained from being little children that those who are powerful are loud, obnoxious, they're big, they have all kinds of toys and da 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 da, and then that's power. That's not power. Power, by God's reckoning, is the ability to become less. Always to becoming less. To t seek the last place. But we're trained that that means you failed. Or that you're no good. And nothing could be further from the truth of the kingdom. So learning that, I'm afraid, the only way, there's only one way we learn that. Can you guess what it is? By suffering. By suffering. It's the only way we learn that. Uh, so he's saying, I want you to be with me. And as because we're wanting to be disciples, because we love him, this is the way that we need to learn. Now, in our time, friends, there's all kinds of things that have changed in how we see one another in uh, organizations and health in church and structures everything is changing and the inclination in the midst of change is or of any kind of trauma or a sharp stress is quite marked naturally when there's some kind of trauma our field of vision goes like this it narrows significantly. And even our bodies get tense, tight, uh, if we see an impact coming. The inclination in trauma is to become uh, angry, fearful, anxious, distressed, uh, and to protect our own turf and to say, this we are the ones or this is a special place and it's just for us and for us alone, or some such thinking that asserts some kind of status. But the gospel calls us to something entirely different and working against that inclination, that temptation to claim status. There is one who teaches us and helps us to know how to understand and uh, adjust our minds, our thinking, and our hearts to this standard of the kingdom. She's the one who lived with him, with the little one of God, for 30 years in the obscurity and the poverty of Nazareth. And he was son of God when he was seven years old, chasing little Miriam down the lane, whom he had a crush on, uh, when he got up and had to do his chores and had to be trained. Uh, all in utter obscurity, nobody would have guessed. Uh, completely hidden in poverty. But she's the one who knew it. She's the one who welcomed the word into her own flesh. Uh, and at the cross, she's the one who received him into her arms uh, by way of suffering. So our blessed lady, our lady of Guadalupe, your patroness, is such a powerful sign for the church today. You know, 500 years ago at her apparition, the Spanish were busy slaughtering 
the indigenous peoples of South America. And she appeared as a mezitza, as a indigenous woman, pregnant with new life. Many years ago, St. John Paul, beneath uh, St. Peter's, the altar in St. Peter's Basilica, is the shrine to the first apostles, Peter and Paul. And right next to that shrine, St. John Paul installed another shrine. And this is to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And he said, this is the shrine to the apostle to the new world. Ah. She brought together these factions that were being, where there was slaughter and distress. And whenever in history there has been pandemic, plague, war, uh, grievous sickness and death, she has always appeared and made herself known as at Lourdes. Uh, she has always made herself known to have a mother's heart and to invite people to find something stable, constant, uh, her love, her regard, her grace, and her assistance. So we commend ourselves to her, place ourselves beneath her cloak as we continue more and more slowly as we're able to learn the way of the disciple. Amen.